What is happening guys? Welcome back to another video. This is the old military mini bike that we've done two Long years ago. Long time ago. Probably yeah. more than that. It was a, yeah, it was a pretty good while ago. We did it for Veterans Day, I think, is I believe. But I think it was. We did a, a fire extinguisher gas tank and it's held up pretty good. We actually sold this or I traded it to a guy uh, from church and he's rode it some but it's been sitting in a barn for a while. So. What we're going to do today is this is a Duromax electric starter. I'm almost positive that's on this. We're going to remove this. Uh, we're going to leave it for now, military theme. But we're going to be slapping on this Vanguard 16 horsepower V twin. Now I've had this thing sitting on the shelf for a long time, and the only reason we haven't used it is because it's got a threaded crankshaft on it. So I'm going to do one of two things. I'm going to either tediously cut a keyway with an angle grinder into this crankshaft i've tried to find a crankshaft on ebay and didn't have no luck uh, but we can cut try to cut a keyway just one about right there so we can slide the pulley on we can do that or we can take these pulleys come apart and there's a video linked up at the top of the screen where you can see us pulling apart one of these and adjusting it but this back uh bail of the cvt and the little neck is all one piece so we could slide it on and tig weld it on and we'd still be able to like work on this if we need to but i think that's the worst way to do it so i think we're going to cut a key i'm going to use an old used 40 series cvt from go power sports we'll most likely have to cut the engine plate off well about guarantee it and put on go power sports thick thick boy 3000s on that mini bike uh, we'll have to trim this plate up and stuff so first off we're going to pull this uh, electric start and get the exhaust off we're going to leave the gas tank for now and leave the ammo can because we're going to leave all that stuff. We'll just get the engine off and start fitting it. So let's do it. <laughs> Would be a part of that. And that took like one minute. This does have a VM22 carburetor to go power sports. One of the knockoffs, I believe. Uh, but we do have these engine risers we made back in the day. This thing is a wee bit crusty. So now I can grab that V-twin and see just, I know what we're most likely gonna have to do is cut this crossbar out, cut this engine plate off, put a crossbar. We'll put the wheel all the way towards the front, which it looks like it already is. And then we can cut down that plate to sit right in here, just wherever that V-twin sits. It should fit, I think. We may have to cut this fender down a little bit, which if we have to, won't be no problem. So let's test fit that thing. So on this Vanguard, the only thing we're gonna remove for now is the muffler. I don't know if we're gonna keep the air box, but the muffler does have to go. Look at those tiny little exhaust ports. Hmm. And what's cool is this is a recoil start as well as an electric start v twin. Really All right. What it looks like. The airbox ain't gonna fit, I don't think. No, or this throttle bracket. So we'll remove those two. Other than that, if we can drop this engine plate lower, you see how it's above it? Mm -hmm. We can make it flush in here. I think it's gonna fit without the airbox. So we'll pull it off. We'll have to make an adapter to put I saw I can put a Makuni on this thing. I like it. It's got like, it looks like a little V8. Look at that. It's got a duct that blows air from the fan into the air box. So it's like a forced induction. That's pretty cool. So it's single bar barrel carb. So, uh, of course, in our experience, a double you know like the 670s have a double barrel carb that leaf in between had a single and uh here's the choke so we're not going to need the pulse pump so we can get rid of it because our tank will be gravity fed they run the pulse pump right off the valve cover pretty cool the original this thing is like a brand new V-twin. This is original Briggs and Stratton 
pull pump. Everything on it's original. We can remove this whole bracket now. So this is the throttle. You can crank it up or lower it down. I might be able to leave that throttle. So if we just need to take this bracket off there. It's a pretty cool design. Yeah. So we it's could different. come in here and grab this if we kept the stock card, but I highly doubt we will. Yeah, V-twin is on there. We just put stationary holes so the engine does not move forward or back. Which so it couldn't anyways very much. No. You know, like an inch and a look that. quad inch. Yeah, I mean, we don't have much room. So we got those holes drilled and how we done did that was we just marked, you can see, I marked the center of this hole on the plate, then I outlined the block, and then I did some measuring, got all the holes drilled. And they all fit, first try. Oh yeah, it, it's good. We got attention to the chain still. But then, if you remember, this was a threaded crankshaft. It wasn't tapered, it's just threaded. I don't even know how that holds something on. It makes no sense to me, but we took a Dremel with a cutting disc and I, hide, or I traced a key on there and then I just cut two slits at the depth, I thought, on each side and then took this little tiny deburr. And it only took like 20 minutes and just went through there, eating it up, and now, I'm pretty impressed with how we got it on the uh, first it's shot. Perfect. It's tight too. Like yeah, I mean, a tiger. Point like a tiger. Look at that. And there's no plate, really. I mean that's turning the crankshaft. There's no plate <laughs> How did we get so lucky? Uh look how huge that engine looks in there. Yeah, it's gonna be heavy. Looks like a regular bike. It's not even a mini bike anymore. Bikes don't handle well, anyways. They have a lot of front end dip to them. So, when you, you remember when you hit brakes, oh, yeah. the front end dips with you. So, we're going to have to stiffen up these. Uh, we're going to pull these apart on a later video and see if we can make them. And I've also them. noticed on the Coleman's, whenever you're leaning through a curve, it wants to fight you the it whole time. It wants to plow the front end into the ground. So, this angle on this neck tube should have been more aggressive. Uh, we do need to gusset this because this is a weak point. <laughs> this is probably not going to be the best woods bike. I mean, on oh, it'll be the worst woods bike. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be cool. Uh, now I got to get all my pipe together. I, pro I don't know if I got a muffler like I want to go with, but um, we'll get to it. But this was super quick. I yeah, that right. took no time. What the is whole it? thing, drilling the uh, bolt holes, Yeah. modifying that. And a, I don't think a 670 would fit on this. I mean, there's not enough. A yeah. 670 squad. This is like 500 and something CC engine, the 16 horse Vanguard. It's gonna be sweet. We gotta order some tires for it too. This thing is ball. <laughs> yeah, they're rough. So we'll get the same ones we put on them. And we will do a swing arm on this bike as well. And the swing arm mini bike will be back. And Monday probably gonna go with the smaller sprocket we were saying. That's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of tooths for yeah. a big torque engine. We're gonna have the power down low with a V-twin. So we can probably put like a 38 tooth on this rear. And this is 60 which will give us a lot better gear. So we'll get everything together and we'll build the exhaust next. And I got a pretty cool intake I'm gonna do. So we'll do it next as well. Let's go. That did sound like something broke. It was just the crust in there. Uh, so we found out that the, 
insides of this crankshaft isn't threaded, you know, because it was an externally threaded crankshaft. So, me and boy George here had to drill it out, and now we're tapping it with a fine, th fine thread, three eighths. So, we'll be able to thread this pulley on, then get to making the exhaust. This is scary. Oh, and I found these on Amazon. These tech, was it tech? No. Yeah, these sockets for taps, they're super handy. Cause I always like to use a ratchet on taps. <laughs> and uh, I go about full turn and a half and then I, you know, back it out. Then we'll get, once this is tapped, we can get to doing the exhaust. <laughs> So I was looking at this carburetor and decided to go ahead and bypass the governor. I'm not going to take it out internally, but I'm going to remove this carb. To remove the carbs on these vanguards, you have to pull the fan shroud off and pull the intake manifold because the bolts go through the bottom of the intake manifold into the carb. We have about six bolts that hold this uh, fan shroud on. We use a 10 millimeter to take those off. And then it's just uh, a couple 12s to take off the intake manifold, two 12s on the bottom of the carb. And I did look up, they do sell a billet flywheel and billet rods for this Vanguard. So we will be doing some performance parts for this thing uh, very soon. We're gonna do the rods, the flywheel, we're gonna do the longer rods and get the pistons milled down. And then we're gonna, I haven't looked for a cam yet, that's the only thing, or valve springs. But if they make rods and flywheels, someone out there has to make the rest of it. There we go, everything's super high quality on this Vanguard. I do like it quite a bit. Again, we got four 12s holding the intake on. Even though we're bypassing the governor, I still don't want to rev this thing super far because uh, these flywheels are extremely unsafe. So that'll be the first thing I buy is a flywheel. The only bad thing is we lose our charging capability and I'm not putting you know, an alternator on this mini bike. This has 16 amps of charging actually, so that's the only downside about removing the governor and putting a different carb on it. Okay. So there's that intake. This actually has the same ports as a 212 Predator does on the exhaust and the intake. So you can actually use a Go Power Sports exhaust flange on the exhaust side. And if you wanted to build your own intake out of steel, you could, uh, but you can see it's the exact same flange. So they got this big riser, this plastic riser, and it's got a divider in there, which I'm gonna cut out. Uh, I'll bore this out later, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it this exact size and leave this, this oscillator on there. Look how tiny that carb is for a V-twin. The same size as a 212. And this is a five, like a 500 cc the twin so what i've found is that a vegas carts exhaust flange lines up perfect on there and it has a lip so you can put one and a quarter inch tubing right down like set it down in there and then i can tig weld around it so what i'm going to do is once this is bolted up onto the block i can put the fan shroud back on real quick i can do a 90 over and put the carburetor right in this area and the carburetor I'm using, I don't know what this is from or what it's for, but it's a Makuni. And uh, it's a, you know, just a little butterfly carb. Has a, a choke mechanism that's like a round slide. And it has an accelerator pump. So this thing is going to be pre pretty sweet over that factory carb. And this carb will set just like right there. Real quick editor's note, this carburetor, I did not know what it was off of. We got it in a box of parts uh, from a friend a while back and it is actually off of a V-twin Lee Fan uh, 250 motorcycle. So if you know about those motorcycles, they're a V-twin and the intake manifold's like a Y. So this carb was designed to point straight up. Like the air filter inlet is supposed to point to the sky. I didn't know that when I was putting it on this box. So I actually 90 it over and put the carb on sideways. You'll see that we fix it later. Just want to put that in. I'm sure people are banging their head against uh, the screen who's used this style carburetor. I just didn't realize what I grabbed off the shelf, um, but it ends up working. So let's get back to the video. All 
All right, so skip forward a little bit. I thought I filmed the making of this intake, but guess what, your boy didn't. So we, um, you seen that we had the Vegas Carts exhaust flange for, I don't know what it was for, I, I think one of their mufflers. But I TIG welded a piece of one and a quarter uh, tubing to it. And the carb, you know, that's not the best setup in the world, but it was quick and dirty and it's gonna work. So this gets the carb out of the way. I couldn't put the carb any lower because of how fat this carb is. And it does clear the handlebar, so. We get max turn without you know it's just <laughs> just a fuzz and we don't we're probably i don't know if we're leaving this engine on this frame but uh we made a quick twist throttle i had to make the whole entire throttle custom so i had to take pieces of throttle cables i had to solder on an eyelet and all that junk we'll do a video on how to make your own throttle cable soon uh but this is a makuni with a a um accelerator pump in it so it's gonna be pretty sweet and i don't know you know it's i don't know if it's gonna be rich lean whatever we'll have to tune this thing out so we've got our fuel hooked up i'm hooking up the kill switch right now and uh bring the strap is pretty cool they put this stud sticking out of the block and it's isolated by plastic and that's your kill hookup so that's pretty cool uh and then if we go on the other side i did the exhaust so this is a go power sports header right out of the box it's just like that uh, build your own header kit we used uh 212 exhaust flanges was perfect on this engine they was like made for it so if you have a brig small v twin like this uh 212 exhaust flanges work great this is a go power sports header didn't modify it at all we just welded on and then we put a couple extensions on it a couple bends and i should have cleaned this better so my tigs didn't come out as pretty as i wanted them to but you know whatever and this is a 180 that goes around to like a 45 and a 90 but it's all tucked looks pretty clean i do like it because your legs won't be anywhere near the heat again i don't know if we're keeping it we're just doing this see what the box like but ah, bike kind of sucks but of course if you want to see this stuff as it's happening follow us on social media sometimes our videos are weeks behind you never can tell uh so you could have seen this exhaust and everything on our instagram so follow us on instagram facebook uh i'm i'm probably more uh active on instagram i would say so that's the place to be. If you don't have an Instagram account, make it and follow Red Beer's Garage. Me and Lonnie was out in the scrap yard, the bone yard we call it, and we, we have a BT200X outside we could have used instead of this junker. We could have took the forks off this. The BT200X is a fat frame bike. And I think it would have looked a lot better with a V-twin with a fat frame, but we're already this far, so. A few moments later. So we got the catch can and stuff installed on the bike and your girl, Miss Redbeard, has been welding the engine plate. She begged me to weld it and I was like, well, you can weld, she hasn't welded in what, a year? Probably one time she's welded. And she welded a piece on the Rover, which you'll see, we had to cut a piece of the frame out to clear a tack. So I'm gonna show you her weld. She's done a super good job. So there's Miss Redbeard's welds. Let's zoom in on them puppies. She wanted to weld the whole thing. It wasn't necessary to weld, you know, this 14 inch weld, but she's done a super good job. That thing's gonna be stronger than a son of a gun. So what we're gonna do is let Lonnie weld the other side we're going to compare and see who's the best. They got a little competition. <laughs> so uh, she's going to finish welding this puppy out. And then we'll let Lon Lonnie weld the other side and see who is the champion. This prime weld MIG 180 is pretty dang amazing. I like it quite a bit. Oh! Oh, left a little pinhole in the center, but it looks good. <laughs> I mean, it looks extremely good for pretty much your first time welding. You want to fill that little hole? Just put a little cherry right there. Look at that, look at that, look at that. More heat than we needed, but you know, we're fine. Okay, now it's Lonnie's turn to do. Lonnie's got a little harder to get to side, but that's no excuse because He's got this area here. Oh, let me clean it real quick too. I gotta degrease it. Then he's gonna do as well. In the comment section below, who do you think's gonna win? They both really got the same amount of welding experience, to be honest. Like same amount of time welding. All right, so say in the comment section below, who do you think's gonna win? Oh, I gotta get comfy first. And whoever wins, that what's gets to take over this garage. <laughs> Technically, I mean, what's his is yours, so you already <laughs> own this garage. True. So I'm really the only one that can come out on top on this. It's either everything stays the same for you guys, or I become like... Moral of the story is don't get married. 
That's the same thing I'm taking. That's all I'm taking. his gas level because our gas bottle is extremely low but right now we're good uh, i have a new bottle i'm just trying to use that one completely out so fire in the hole again sounds real good i can't see it now it's underneath the flywheel so this is lon Treasy's welds he started off rough but then ended strong he didn't weld the whole thing just because that engine ear is sticking out that's good enough for now but so that's Lonnie's, and this one's Miss Redbeard's. So who do you think won the Weld Challenge 2021? <laughs> it's crazy, that's 2021. So your comments will, and decide. we gotta decide what the winner gets. Probably nothing. But, uh, so let's know who you think won. Who do you think won? I don't know, I mean we got two different styles, so. Um, best well of me overall, though, I think hers is consistent. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the last weld on Lonnie's side, too, he went over his original weld. That's why it's a little fat. But uh, Lonnie got the pattern down pat of making a really small weave in there. And Becca was just making a wider weave. Really, I mean, they're both good welds. They're going to be strong. They ain't going nowhere. They ain't coming off. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, make sure to let us know in the comment section below who do you think won the weld challenge. Uh, I thought it was pretty fun to let them. Becca's been begging me to weld stuff all the time, and I never. She always wants to weld, like, important things. Like, either things I want to have a pretty weld on them, or they need to be really strong. Uh, so, I'm bad about not letting her. So, I need to, you know, let off and just allow her. She showed me up. I'll tell you, that was extremely good for pretty much her first time welding. Lonnie's welded a little bit, but it's been a really long time, like a year or so since he's welded. So uh, I'll start letting him weld more. I'm just a particular about my welds and stuff. Um, and especially if it's like a customer vehicle, I can't let, uh, I don't want like a crazy <laughs> rough looking weld on it. But um, next episode will be out Monday and you will see us riding this thing it's a pretty freaking fun bike i like it a lot it needs some tuning out and stuff but uh, we're gonna make this bike pretty sweet and the swing arm mini bike which is uh right there is almost done i just need to weld it out and then we can make the intake and then ride that puppy and we change up the swing arm that you'll see in the next video on it as well make sure to check out the links in the video's description they do help us out a ton every part we use on this bike is linked down below and uh yeah remember to tell us who who won and what they should have won. Uh, we can continue this challenge on the channel for a little while and uh, see who gets uh, better. I'll give them the same amount of time to weld and see who gets it down pat faster. But uh, Ms. Redbeard is interested in welding, so I'm gonna start letting her weld all she wants. She just can't weld certain things like suspension parts. I'm gonna stick to welding that. <laughs> but uh, they both did a great job. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Check out those links. Use those links. They help us continue to do these videos and not be homeless. And uh, thank you guys so much for your support. We love you guys and God bless.